Hello, hello. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, if you're watching this via the YouTube link, you should be able to comment on it um, and kind of say what you're thinking as we go along together. We're going to be drawing a clownfish step by step together. Um, hopefully you can uh, have some colored pencils at home so you can make it nice and colorful. Um, I went ahead and turned my screen brightness down. This is the image we're going to be drawing from here. So the first thing you're going to need is your sketching pencil. Uh, I'm using an HB pencil. This is the same kind of pencil that is in, uh, that's in a mechanical pencil or your standard uh, pencil that you use for school. Um, it's nice and it's not too soft. It's not going to smear while we're sketching, which is why I like using it for sketching and getting my drawing set up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm using the most of my, the best part of my page to draw this. I don't want to draw this really, really tiny on here. So I'm going to kind of set up my proportions. So I'm going to think about the direction that the fish is going and kind of look at that. And I'm using my pencil to kind of get the direction and then put that on my page and think about where I'm going to put it on my page so that it takes up a good amount of the space. So I'll make a little mark for the tail. I'm coming. This is probably going to be about two thirds of my paper. But if you're using, you don't want to use something else. You can, it's about the width of my hand is the size that I'm making for my fish. I'm going to make a little mark for the front of it. And then a great way to figure out how to fill out the shapes inside of something like this is to use uh, ellipses. So like the widest part of the tail back here is about this wide and then it comes in a little bit so then it's only about this wide then get the back of the body it gets a little bit bigger again so I'm going to open it back up and then I've got the front of the face here um, it's like kind of a bigger um, ellipsis shape so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because its face is turned a little bit towards us. Then it gets wider from there. So we're kind of creating a skeleton that we can draw over the top of. The helps so we don't have to just draw a really nice outline around it. If you took the bear lesson, it's kind of similar to how we were mapping out all the different muscles and areas on the bear. I'm going to add one more in between these to kind of remind me that it's body is really, really thick in the middle and then really tapers off pretty quickly. All right. So now I can start to add my outside lines around it. So I'm going to start at the front of it, the front of the face, and I'm going to draw a curved line that comes down and connects these two spaces here. And there's nothing really breaking up the bottom line of this fish, so I can actually carry this line all the way through. The top has a lot more fins and things to deal with. So continuing along the back here, I'm going to go up, and then I see I've gotten to my kind of thin area here. Where it's going to come out and then come down for the back part of the tail and then the tail tapers off a little bit so I'll make that kind of little taper that I see and then I can connect it in here and come back in to the back part of the fish. Now I've got a fin on the top so what I can do is I'll really just very lightly draw this line that connects the top of all these ellipses I've created but I'm going to add the fins. So the fins kind of look like they're between these two. So I'm going to make that. Uh, it's kind of leaning back a little bit. The shape leans back. It's not leaning forward to the front of the fish. So I'll add a little curve like that. And then I've got another one that's definitely has kind of a flat edge on the back, like a plateau. So I'll come away from this, come up, have a flat line, and then reconnect, it reconnects almost right at the base of the tail. So I want to make sure I'm bringing it back far enough that when it comes back, it basically just connects with the tail like that. And 
Now I'm going to go ahead and add the face. So I'm looking at the angle of the eyes here and I can use my pencil and see kind of what that angle that those are at and come back to my paper. I can see it's going to be on a diagonal. So I'll kind of map in where do I think that the eye goes. So we've got this ellipsis I drew earlier for the eye and I think I can see there's a little bit of like orange peeking out so I'm going to put it just inside of that space. And if you wanted to draw a more kind of animated eye, you could make it bigger and then make it kind of cutesy if you want to do it like, you know, less realistic. This is your, you know, you can add your style to this. And then I'm going to modify the face a little bit because I can see that the eye comes out on the other side and comes down. So I'm going to take my line from the face and I'm going to come out here a little bit and come down. So now it looks like the illusion of that there's both eyes there. Now I'm going to add the mouth, and the mouth is, you know, a little downturned shape. A little fish mouth. So to do that, I'm going to come and draw a line. You can see the angle there, so I want to make sure I draw it a little bit down. Draw little fishy lips. And connect that to the front of the face. I'm going to go ahead and draw the lips around it too. You know, I don't think being called a fish lips is a compliment, but I also don't think it's like the worst thing I've ever heard. All right, so I'm looking at where the fins are on my fish now, and I want to draw in the rest of the fins before I get too far ahead into the patterns and stuff. So this fin is, is turned in here. So to do that, I'm going to draw a curved shape and then connect a triangle in front of it. And I know I can't see the front of it, but I'm going to just draw it in anyways. And then I'll draw the an anemone over the top. And then I've got this fin on the bottom. So I'll add that as well comes out from the bottom and it's a little bit more curved than the top one. I'm not sure if there's another fin back here or not. I'm no fish expert, so I'll just leave that one since I'm going to be covering it with an anemone anem anem anyways. All right, let's go ahead and map where our stripes are going to be. If it's really busy looking now to you, you can go ahead and erase all those internal lines. If that helps you to look at your drawing a little bit more clearly, especially we're gonna, when you're going to be coloring a light color like orange or yellow um, over the top of your line work, you want to make sure that you have a lot of those internal lines erased because they will smudge some of those brighter colors a bit. You'll be able to see them. I'm drinking some, some nice warm tea. It's a cool 18 degrees here in Michigan today. All right. So I got a stripe that comes on the top of this top fin. Oh, here I'll move this down a little bit. So I'm going to start with the front of the fin here and just kind of follow it back. And I see it goes right under the other fin. And these lines don't have to be completely perfect. They're just showing me where I'm going to put in my color. And I got the black stripe comes under here. All right, and I got black on the back of the fin here. So I'm coming up and I'm going to come down. And I can see this black line actually comes all the way up to connect to the front to go underneath this fin. 
So much of drawing is just sitting and looking at something and asking yourself, where, what does it really look like versus what I assume it looks like? I mean, if I was trying to draw a clownfish from memory, it looks so different than this. All right, so I'm going to make this stripe come across the back of the tail. And then I can see that the black actually takes up a lot of the tail, so I'm just going to draw where the orange is which is kind of an odd, almost a uh, paw print shape in the back. And then there's a white in between. Now I gotta put a stripe up by the face. All right, so the stripe for the face, it comes just barely behind the eye. So I'm gonna go behind the eye, leave that little gap for the orange, and then come down. And this is gonna help create that illusion that the face is really nice and round too. And the stripe's a little bit bigger here, gets really thin, comes around again. <laughs> Bless you. And then I got white here. Don't know what's happening there. And then it looks like it tops off with black again. So I can already see some of my proportions are running into each other a little bit. So I didn't quite make the face area long enough, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt anybody's feelings. As far as the eye details go, um, fish eyes are kind of a weird uh, rounded square shape as far as the pupil goes. So you can add that in there. If you want to make it like kind of cutesy, you can like leave a little shine spot on it. I like to do that when I draw my pet portraits, a little cute little shiny spot. Let's add in the anemone before we get coloring. So the anemone comes up in front of my fish in two different spots. So I'll go ahead and use my eraser to make sure I got spots for those to come back up. And if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, my fish looks terrible, you know what? This is a great opportunity for you to add more anemone uh, little leggy armies all over your fish. Um, you could really cover that thing up. You know, if the barn needs paint, paint it with anemones. That's what they always say. My fish looks like it's witnessed a great crime. It's going to be called in for jury duty. All right, so I got an enemy coming out of the back of it here. Now this is kind of a part you can just, you know, I'm looking at the picture and just adding them, but you could do really whatever you wanted for these as far as adding them and how many you want to have. Maybe I want to have one that comes up this way. Almost touches him. So that come up almost touch the belly. Looks like some of these have little branches. So I can add those.
All right, so now I'm going to start using my colored pencil to fill it in. So I'm actually, because I really want this orange to be really, really bright, the first thing I'm going to do is lay down yellow. Because if I um, try to make like a bright spot like on the front of this goldfish and I just try to use orange, it'll just look like the really most intense version of the orange that I have. If I put down yellow first when I color orange over the top of it, it'll pop a lot more. So I'm going to fill in the front of the face with yellow. And you always want to start with your lightest colors when you're doing uh, colored pencil. I could erase my drawing a little bit more, but I want you guys to be able to see it. So, And I'm coloring pretty lightly. Um, I just want to put nice, I just want to put material down underneath this. Um, the top of my fish too, I want to add yellow up here. Looks like the edges of the fins have like some really bright orange spots. And back here I can see some more light and coming down to the top of the fish. And then on the either side of the tail here, it's a little bit lighter. And I can see a little bit on the bottom fin as well, that kind of lighter orange. Now I can take my orange pencil and come in and start putting color down. So where my areas are lighter, I'm using lighter pressure and then I'm pushing down a little bit harder in these areas that are darker. So I've got a sh pretty big shadow underneath the eye of the fish, so I definitely want to make sure that I'm putting down more orange there to create that shadow. And I'll actually add a red pencil as well to add a little bit more depth to it. Got a lot of really rich color underneath its chin, so I'm making sure to add some good amount of orange there. And then the mouth is really light. I can see that there's a little bit of dark inside the mouth, so I'm going to add that orange in there. And then the top of the head's got some, on, some of that lighter kind of medium color. So I'm just breaking down all these little movements of color to see what I can add to create that roundness in its face. Now I can see I've got my medium orange on my fins. This process is a lot like color by number where you're figuring out, okay, where is this color showing up? And you can see how much different this orange is than this one that has the yellow under it. All right, now I'm going to go over here to the main body of the fish and start to fill it in. Now I'm not pushing down crazy hard with this part because I know I'm going to be adding red on top of it as well. And I just want to make sure that I'm not adding too much material because once it gets really built up on the page, I can start to move it around and it'll start to look kind of muddy. But I am going to put some amount down up here. To show that crease in the fin.
Right now I'm going to go back to the tail, add my nice medium oranges on that. And then I've got that kind of darker spot here. There's actually quite a bit of orange inside of the eye, so I'm just going to lightly put down orange on the eye, and then I'm going to go back with black over the top of it, and that'll make the orange kind of pop through. Now I'm going to take my red to really get some depth on some of these. And if you want your colored pencil to be really, really blended, you can use scumbling, which is a technique where you use your pencil and go in round shapes like this as you color it in. And if you want it to be more directional, like keep the lines that are in it, you can uh, use it more of a, on a point and then go follow the fish directionally if you want to kind of contour it with those colors. Just depends how much texture you want. Now I'm just looking for kind of the darkest orange spots and adding red in wherever I see those to make it pop a little bit. We're going to be drawing flowers together for our live lesson next month. So if you have a suggestion for flowers, me doing kind of a handmade Valentine theme, let me know if you have anything in particular you want to draw. Now before I go in with black, I probably want to do my anemone first because black's going to be really intense on the page. I can also come back in with my orange now and add it over the top. And this is going to make that red uh, really blended in well with the orange. It's going to make it really, really vibrant. These are Prismacolor pencils. These are definitely uh, some of the nicer color pencils I have as far as blending goes and being able to make some really, really nice uh, layered colors really vibrant. And I'm using a kind of a Bristol paper, which is not the uh, most ridged paper like I used for watercolor or ink. It's definitely smoother and that is really nice for this kind of project where I'm not doing something that has a lot of texture. If you have ever questions about materials or brands of things that you're trying to buy, you can always reach out. I always try to help you find the right fit for what kind of project you're doing because sometimes getting things that are cheaper is just better. And other times it's worth it just to splurge on the nice stuff. I think I'm going to do a pink anemone, maybe some purples on it. So I'm going to go ahead before I add my black and just quickly fill in most of my anemone so that it doesn't get too muddy when I add the black over the top.
add a little bit of shading to them. So just on the uh, left side of each of them, I'm just going to come in with a little bit of a darker color. Nothing, nothing fancy. So I've laid down a good amount of color, so now I can come in with my black colored pencil here. And when you're working with uh, black um, or anything that's really dark, you want to go ahead and start on the left side of your page if you're right-handed and then work your way across it. Otherwise, you're going to be dragging your hand through it the whole time. All right. And if you wanted really, really rich, nice black colored pencil, the best way to do that is to lay down a color underneath. Like for this, I'd probably either, I'd probably put down purple underneath it. Here, I can show you a little bit. And that would make the black on the page even richer. You could also do this after you add the black. It's just going to make the black pop a lot more. Especially with how vibrant we made those oranges. Now I want to color this part pretty directionally so that it follows the fin. All right, I got a couple more black lines coming up here. Now that I started doing this, I'm scared to stop, so I'm going to just do purple underneath all of them. Rascal is taking over my desk chair. He's sitting next to me. I'm coloring really directionally on this fins again to show a little bit of that wavy texture. Got a couple more black lines left. I always get scared when I'm working on the face of 
people or animals because I'm like, this is when I'm going to ruin it. This is when I'm going to ruin it. All right, and I can see that the black is a lot darker and tighter right near the front of the stripe where it meets the white. So I want to make sure I'm really I'm putting some good pressure down right there. And then I can let loosen up a little bit as I gorge towards the back of the fish where it blends with orange. Noticing those little details like that, that's what's going to help really make your drawing come to life. Just being patient with looking at something. All right, I'm going to go to the eye. The center of the eye is really, really dark. And then it's kind of a blended black around it. can just see a tiny bit of the other eye. So I'm just going to add it like this and add a little bit of orange to it. Add the illusion that there's the other eye in the background. Now I can add some details like this little line that comes around the lip. I'm going to use a light blue pencil just to kind of fill in the spots of white on it and add a little shading. Maybe a little purple in there too would look nice. And there you go. We've colored a clownfish together. Uh, if you did this along with me, please send me your results. I love to see your guys' drawings and see what you've come up with and see how you created it. And if you have any questions about materials, techniques, or anything as you've uh, drawn along with me, please reach out and let me know. As always, this is super fun, and I will see you next time for flower drawing for a little Valentine's special. Thanks, guys.